These are the best heroes in Overwatch 2 right now. Let's do this. Now, it must be said, Overwatch 2 is brand new. This means the meta is brand new. So there is going to be a period of time where the game is in flux as everybody tries to work out who are the strongest and who are the weakest heroes and what is the best team comp. So you can, in theory, play any hero you like and just keep playing them and see what happens. However, this video is going to be about ranking the best heroes and i'm just going to tell you who is the best right now based off high level play and generally what happens in overwatch's history is the high level play tends to trickle down the ladder to every tier of play so if genji is very strong he's generally very strong everywhere if symmetra is weak then she's probably quite weak in most situations however another caveat or disclaimer before we get into this video is Overwatch has heroes that work in very specific scenarios. The Symmetra example is great. She might be awesome on control maps where you can load the point with your turrets and maybe get a bunch of kills. However, on other maps like Push where the payload is constantly moving or the objective is constantly moving, she can be a little bit weaker. That's not to say she can't work, but this video is going to focus on the absolute best heroes to play right now at the launch of Overwatch 2. And one more thing, before we get into this, a quick word on the meta and the way the meta is going to develop. We are most likely going to see a variation of dive comp. This is when Kiriko is available for playing competitive. And remember, she'll be available about two weeks after the game launches. But I fully expect to see some, some, some form of Kiriko dive. So Kiriko, Genji, Winston, you could change Winston with the Diva. You could throw in a Tracer, you can throw in a sojin instead of the tracer but i think the main heroes you're going to see in use all of the time are definitely going to be genji kiriko either winston or diva but probably winston as for the other support may, might even be a lucio it could be any other support but lucio there for the dive for the rapid move uh, movement because of course remember kiriko has got high healing output and she's got high mobility so i think she can probably cover the sort of main healer slot that is the healer that puts out the most healing for the purpose of this video okay let's get into this okay let's do this so we're going to break these heroes down into s tier the absolute best heroes right now based on the way they play in 5v5 based on the buffs they've got transitioning over to overwatch 2 these are the best heroes and you could just play these all of the time amazing these are the heroes which are just well amazing they'll work pretty much all of the time as well but they're not as good as the s tier heroes then we move on to good now good these will be okay they'll be fine to play but there's probably going to be better options definitely in the two tiers above obviously and then better options this is where well these heroes you're basically better off playing another hero in the same role instead of these ones. And then bad, these are just going to be the heroes that are just not great. Um, there's going to be almost always better selections than the bad heroes. Unless, of course, you are an amazing one trick of that specific hero, then I think you're probably going to suffer if you play these heroes because they just don't really fit that well into the whole 5v5 kind of setup of Overwatch 2. Okay, so let's populate the S tier to begin with. And I think it's, no, it's going to come as no surprise that Kiriko is S tier. High mobility, high damage. She's got amazing survivability. She can prevent uh, ally players taking damage, remove them from... Basically, she phases them out of the game for a second. But this also cleanses them. It also heals them a little bit. She's got great burst healing when she's close range. It's like, what can this hero not do? She is the first 5v5 hero. That is the hero that's been designed for 5v5. So it's no shock that she's here. And also... She's in the battle pass, so go and buy the battle pass. Hey, 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 Blizz. <laughs> but yeah, she's the best, basically. Um, now we're going to move on to... Well, I think actually we'll do... Mm, let's do... I think we, well, we've got to go for Genji, because Genji is mega powerful. The reason why Genji's powerful, it, it's quite simple. Oh, and actually, on Kiriko as well, her ultimate is amazing. It just is amazing. So you've got to think, increased attack speed, increased movement speed, um, decreased cooldown on abilities. So it's just crazy. It's an engaged tool. It's a tool you can just use in a fight to win a fight. There's like, you can just think of like Roadhog when he uses whole hog. And if, if he's standing in Kiriko's ultimate, the damage is just insane. It's ridiculous. So she's crazy. Genji though, well, Genji loves 5v5. Genji is highly mobile, high burst damage, an amazing ultimate. But not only that, there are no stuns really in Overwatch. When you look at this guy, Cassidy, he's not S tier Cassidy, by the way, but if you look at Cassidy, Cassidy used to be able to counter Genji quite effectively, but he can't do that anymore because he doesn't have a stun. 
and there's a bunch of other heroes like Brig. Brig could just shut him down. Not anymore because she doesn't have a stun. You know, you, you could, the list just goes on and on and on. Stuns have been removed from this game, really. They've just turned them into minor inconveniences, like little interrupts, which is good for the game. But this means Genji has got complete free reign. He can just dominate and so he's mega mega powerful and of course if he pops dragon blade oh my god it's just going to be kill after kill after kill because you can't stop him the only way to deal with him is to kill him or to try and out heal the damage and as we all know that's pretty difficult to do with genji especially when he's dragon blading so yeah definite top tier uh, next we're going to go for a tank i think we'll go for winston so winston is the best tank in the game by far he's the dive tank the quintessential dive tank he's got high survivability he's got high mobility he's got a decent little bit of ranged poke it's not the best but it's good for securing kills obviously he's winston so he's massive he absorbs a ton of damage basically you can play winston very aggressively in overwatch 2 so if you're just like a yolo feed your brains out type of player you will be amazing in overwatch 2 because you'll just literally dive into the enemy team and you're like highly highly survivable but it's that whole getting in there, disrupting the enemy, dropping the barrier. And barriers are still really strong in Overwatch 2. They're incredibly strong. And they're even stronger because there's less barriers. That's the way to look at it. So double barrier was a terrible comp because nobody got to play the game. But with just one barrier in play, it's fine. And Winston has actually got one of the better barriers in the game just because of the way it works. Because if you jump onto a support and drop the barrier, well, they ain't going to be able to heal through that probably. And you can use the barrier to your advantage to duke in and out of the barrier so yeah winston is just absolute god top tier tank but you know what there is another top tier tank right now i did speak about diva a little bit but i'm not actually going to put diva in the top tier i'm going to put diva in the a tier but i'm not in fact i'll just put her there now just so i don't forget but diva is going to go into the a tier this is because diva isn't as good as winston so the s tier is reserved for literally the best tanks in or the best heroes in in, in their respective roles Winston is just better than D.Va, but D.Va is still a really strong pick. So if you pick D.Va, you're still going to be able to get the same type of value you'll get as Winston. Um, but yeah, I, I would just pick Winston instead of D.Va, unless there's very, I don't know, niche examples where you need D.Va's defense matrix or something like that. Um, apart from that, you're, you're picking Winston. The other tank, though, which is S tier, this might come as a little bit of a shock to some people. Uh, to others, I don't think it will, but it's Sigma. Now, Sigma is... His barrier is great. And I think the way to look at this between these two tanks is Sigma is really strong on maps where there's longer range engagements. So if you're on a map where Widowmaker is really strong, so on uh, Monte Cassino or I, what did they call it? I'm going to keep calling it Monte Cassino. That map anyway, the map that's in Monte Carlo uh, where you start in a casino. <laughs> um, that map's got some really long sight lines. You generally get a lot of Widowmaker on that map. Well, Sigma is actually really, really, really good at shutting down those angles that Widowmaker might abuse. And Sigma's just great anyway. So he's sort of the... Uh, we're coining this term Brawler Tank in Overwatch 2 a lot. Um, and that's kind of what Sigma is. Even though he's a barrier tank, he's a Brawler Tank because he stays with his team. A dive tank is off diving away, doing whatever they're doing. But Sigma, he's the other option. So if you're on a dive map, you're picking Winston. If you want more of a brawly team comp, you're picking Sigma, but you could just play any of these heroes and just be happy with it. Now, I'm really happy with this because these two are probably my two favorite tanks after playing Overwatch 2 uh, through the beta and the closed test phases and all of that stuff. So I'll probably be maining these two heroes. I think they're really, really, really strong. Now, there is another hero who is absolutely S tier. And now this, again, might come as no shock, but it is Lucio. Now, you can see what we've got here. So we've got these two supports. You can play them together because Kiriko, is, or Kiriko, I should say, has got high healing output, which is a bit difficult to make that happen, but I think players will get used to it. But you could replace, you know, in, in the ideal team comp, any other main support. When I say main support, I mean a support with high healing output, just for the context of this video, because it gets really complicated when you're talking about flex supports in Overwatch and main supports because the, the terminology is really mixed up. But just for this main support basically is someone with a ton of healing output whereas lucio doesn't have a lot of that so he's more flexible i guess you could say he's got movement speed buff which is really really good and that's why basically that's it lucio's got movement speed buff and he's highly survivable so he can take jewels and it's not hard for him to be killed by flankers of which there will be a lot in overwatch 2 because remember the game's more open uh, but lucio yeah he's just he's got speed boost and it's aoe and it's amazing he's got aoe healing as well he can jewel he's just great these guys are basically the best in the game right now so i'm going to move on to the a uh, to the to, well the a tier this will be but it's the amazing tier and this is well I'm, I'm going to start i think what i'm going to do here is i'm going to start this with bap because i think bap is very strong right now bap had a damage buff so bap basically does 25 damage per bullet instead of 24 now you might think well this isn't a lot 
you've got to remember he fires three bullets. So when you add that together, it actually means it's a substantial amount of damage. Even though it's only an increase of three, well, you, let's say it's an increase of three per three shots that he fires, you know, so when you fire three, you, you get what I'm going with this, right? It's a buff to damage and it makes him a lot more able to deal with flankers that have got low HP. I guess the fancy way of putting this is it deals with his break points. It basically reduces them so he's more effective. So when he's dueling people, he's doing more damage and it's surprising what you can actually manage with this. Also, his healing is great. His survivability is great. And this is, these are key elements in Heroes and Overwatch. If you're able to survive or you've got high survivability, then you're actually a really good character because you're able to fight other characters that might be trying to kill you. Whereas if you've got low survivability, and you'll see this throughout the list. In fact, I'll just show you an example. There you go. Cassidy's bad because he's got really low survivability. He's got low movement. Yeah, he can roll and yeah, Blizzard increase the range of it, but he's got really low he can't escape he's literally with his team he's very slow okay his weapon's great his um grenade is okay it's not as good as flash but flash is obviously bad for other reasons and that's not in the game anymore so it's not even worth talking about flash uh, because stuns have been removed but he is just bad and also there's a ton of better heroes you could pick instead of him but it's mainly because his survivability is so trashed here he just dies and that's a problem but yeah that's why bap is really amazing because he's just got high survivability great healing it actually is regenerative 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 <laughs> if i get that right uh burst is amazingly good because this instantly heals you when it hits you and also applies a heal over time and the instant heal has been increased as well when compared to overwatch so yeah he's he is mega strong so supports you, you've got a lot there's a lot of really good characters in the support role i guess we'll stick with support and we'll just throw anna into this as well anna again very strong um she's got less mobility than Batiste, but she makes up for that with better long range healing and better burst healing. Obviously, she's got Nano, which is like an instant fight win almost all of the time because there's hardly any way to stop it. And it's that age old thing Nano the Genji, and you win. It's just that will be in game after game after game because players won't be able to stop Genji. He will be able to do whatever the hell he likes. And it'll be a bit annoying to begin with until people start shooting the Genji or maybe Blizzard nerf him or what. I don't know, but he's got a mythic skin. So ha ha ha, <laughs> he's not going to get nerfed. Um, but yeah, Anna's just the same old hero. She's amazing. Sleep is awesome. If you sleep people, that's again, great self-protection. If someone's trying to harass you and you put them to sleep or you can just use sleep to shut down all kinds of uh, uh, heroes when they're trying to use their ultimates or whatever. It's Sleep's just sleep. It's pointless talking about it. amazing ability. A grenade, amazing ability. This is the other point to Anna. You can land offensive grenades all of the goddamn time. It is like Christmas in Overwatch 2. You can yeet these nades into the enemy team, and it's simply because there is only Sigma Suck, Diva Defense Matrix, and um, barriers that will stop this going into your team. And you, there's only ever going to be one barrier. And if there's a Diva on the team, you just don't throw it at the Diva because there's only one tank. So you just throw it into the enemy team. So highly recommend using her nade way more offensively than defensively in Overwatch 2. But she is just mega, mega powerful. Really, really, really strong character. And I guess we'll stick with supports and we'll go in for Brig. Brig is mega good. Now, Brig, there is an argument for putting Brig into S tier, but I'm not going to do that. Because I do think that Kiriko and Lucio are just better. And there's only two support slots. So we don't want to be, you know, loading this with tons and tons of uh, <laughs> supports as we're all S tier. Um, but Brig has got mega high survivability. So her Inspire is much better than it used to be. Um, simply because you can activate it easier. So every every ability that Brig has got. So Shield Bash does damage. Whip Shot does damage. Primary Fire does damage. They all trigger Inspire. So it's very easy to keep Inspire active. And of course, she's Brig. So she's got her own personal barrier. And she's got a ton of armor and health for a support. So she's mega survivable. The best way to play Brig is to just look after your other support while also trying to be, you know, kind of like in, in the sort of the mid range of the fight, if that makes any sense. You don't want to be on the front line because you'll get killed, but you want to be with your other support and they just won't die. And if the enemy team are trying to, you know, push tracers or push, um, let's say, uh, I don't know, Genji's onto you, you've got a bit more of a chance to survive. And this actually uh, is the other thing I think we should talk about now because it's Tracer. Now, I was tempted to put Tracer into S tier as well, but I think I'm going to leave the S tier as it is. I and mean, I'm going to put Tracer in A tier or the amazing tier. Um, Tracer is just Tracer, right? She's highly mobile. She is insane damage at close range. She can look after herself with a mobility with a rewind as well to get her health back. 
If you know where the health packs are on the map as well, you can blink around to them pretty quick. You can engage, disengage, engage, disengage. You can be independent of requiring active support from your supports, which makes her really strong. And of course, she's very good at dueling 1v1. And obviously, you know, when you're going up against it, like if you went up against a Kiriko as Tracer, Kiriko needs to headshot you. Um, she can spam just shots into your body, but she only does 40 damage per body shot, but she does do 120 damage on the headshot. So you've got to be careful, but you can still take her on. Or she'll just probably just teleport away and you'll be like, okay, well, I can't get to her. Same with Anna. She might throw a grenade into the floor to heal her, heal herself and obviously damage you. Or she might put you to sleep. All these things have always existed in Overwatch, the Anna and the Tracer combo. But Tracer, again, is like a hero that works really well in 5v5 simply because the maps are a bit more open. There's a lot more um, flank routes and all that kind of stuff. It's easier for Tracer to get into that effective range she needs to be in to do the damage. And she's also a dive hero. And like I said at the top of the video, this is pretty much a dive comp style game, really. I mean, I don't think we're going to see uh, any kind of like goat style comps but I mean we might do but I don't think for the start of the game we're going to see a lot of dive heroes being played because that's what the game's built for this is a much faster game than Overwatch if you even can believe that so Tracer fits into it really 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 well all right let's move on to another hero um I guess let's do uh let's keep this should we keep this DPS let's keep this DPS I'm gonna go for Ash next so Ash um and by the way these are in no particular order I'm just adding them. they're all in the, the, the amazing tier uh, I don't know about Ash, actually. You know what? Maybe I'll put Ash slightly lower. You know what? I'm going to put Ash into the B tier. This is only because I think Soldier... Uh, can, I, can I say that? Oh, oh, yeah. I think Soldier and definitely Sojourn are better than Ash at what Ash does. Ash has some redeeming features, though. I mean, she's got Bob, who's a pretty good ultimate. A Dynamite can be annoying as well. Um, but the thing is with these two guys, they are mobile. They can look after themselves a little bit better because they're mobile. Obviously, Soldier can heal himself. Soldier is that consistent damage output as well. Um, you remember as well the new DPS passive where after you get an elimination, you reload faster, which is obviously, and you move a bit quicker, but the reloading faster helps these guys out a ton. It also helps Ash, but these are just better. So they can secure kills a little bit better as well, I think. Ash is, um, I don't know, maybe in some cases, Ash, when she's using ADS, you know, you land a few headshots, you're going to kill faster than Soldier, but it's at the cost of your mobility. So while you're sitting there looking down your ADS, you might be getting harassed and getting taken out, whereas Soldier can deal with harassment better, I, I think, just because he can heal himself. You know, the same, the age-old thing, if you drop down your biotic field and you just start firing at whoever's harassing you. Yeah, I think Soldier's really, really, really good in, um, in, in Overwatch 2. Sojourn, though, is probably... Uh, if, if these were in order, Sojin would be better than Soldier, I think. But they're still A tier. Now, th this is just because Sojin has got the uh, higher kill potential. Uh, effective elimination potential, let's say. Whereas with Soldier, you're spamming, spamming, spamming. You will get kills a lot. But with Sojin, you spam with primary fire. And then as soon as Railgun's ready, you're just looking to kill someone. You're looking to headshot a another DPS or a support and, and remove them from the game. And that'll happen a lot in Overwatch 2. And when it happens, it's pretty much a fight win if it's just before the engagement. So, yeah, Sojourn gets the, the, the nod there over Soldier. And Sojourn's mobility uh, is arguably better as well because she can access high ground where Soldier can't. But, yeah, Ash, she's okay, but these two guys are better. Um, all right, I think we'll move on to... Okay, I'm going to put... So, okay, so Sombra, I'm going to stick her in A tier just because I think in a coordinated team, Sombra is going to be incredible. Sombra has got so much going on for her. She has a massive list of buffs. In Overwatch 2, she does more damage. She stays invis when she hacks, although she is detected when she does it. But invis doesn't drop, although you, like when she hacks you, you can see her doing it. But it's only for like a second. So if you don't react fast, she's instantly invis again and you don't see. So using hack doesn't break invis. Uh, her ultimate's pretty good because obviously it knocks everyone's health down uh, by 40% of whatever the value is. Uh, and she's just really good. I mean, when she hacks a target, she does extra damage to it. She shows the team where it is. You could like... There is a world where Kiriko, this is this is going to sound crazy because Kiriko is a support, but it's almost like the rule book is being written with this character. Kiriko and Sombra can just dive the enemy back line. <laughs> now, Kiriko can be chilling in her own back line or in the fight, healing a team, and then she can see her Sombra, and if these guys are coordinating, Sombra can hack the enemy Anna, and then Kiriko can immediately teleport to Sombra, and they can both destroy Anna. You're going to see this a lot, I think, in higher level play. 
Um, but it's going to take some time for this to come in. But there are so many combos with Sombra. It doesn't need to be Kiriko. I mean, that would be risky to do it with Kiriko because obviously if she was out in the back line and she doesn't have a cooldown ready to go and the enemy team react fast, she could get caught out of position. But Tracer, Genji, all these heroes work just as well with Sombra setting up that attack. And she's just really, really powerful Sombra is. But it depends on working with your team. But I will say this as well. Sombra on her own can do a hell of a lot. Um, she can get out there and she can just start taking people on 1v1 way better than she could in Overwatch 1. So maybe she doesn't even need the assistance like I've just outlined. So yeah, she she is uh, uh, really, really good. I'm just so, I'm so annoyed that I'm so bad with this character. I wish I was better and maybe I'll spend some time and try and get better with her because I think she's just cracked. She's just absolutely powerful uh, in Overwatch 2. All right, now we're going to get a bit funky because I'm going to throw... Um, who am I going to throw here? I'm going to throw... I want to put Torb into this tier as well. <laughs> People are probably going to think I'm smoking something special and I'm crazy. <laughs> because Torb... <laughs> okay, okay. I'm putting Torb in this tier. Um, Because... Oh my god. I'm putting Torb in this tier because Torb is hard to kill, right? Okay, I know he's little. But Torb's got a bit of armor. So what is he? 200 health or 250 health and then he's got armor? Um, He is great. So Torb... When he's close range, when he's using his um, overdrive, molten core, whatever the hell he calls it. No, it's not molten core. That's his ultimate, in it? Um, you know what I mean. We you press E, don't you, on PC. Speeds up his attack speed, right? It, it also makes him a bit tankier as well. But speeds up his attack speed. The right click, so the alternate fire, the shotgun, is so massively damaging. This guy can just run at the enemy tank and kill it. So if Winston dives in and Torbjorn manages to catch the Winston, he will just kill him. It is, like, incredibly powerful. Obviously, his turret is his turret, and it just messes around, annoying people with damage, and that's fine. But I think Torb, honestly, is uh, really survivable, and he's kind of like a Reaper, and I think Reaper should be in this tier as well. But I, I would say ooh, Reaper's better than Torb, I would say. But Torb's got the long-range poke with his primary fire, with the rivet gun. Uh, Reaper doesn't have that, but Reaper has the mobility instead. So I probably would pick Reaper over Torb, but I think Torb's going to be pretty good, guys. So I'd be aware of that. But yeah, Reaper, just for the same reasons as Torb, can delete tanks from the game. If you babysit the, the target, which is going to be dived by an enemy dive tank, you'll just kill them. So if Winston comes in, you'll just kill him. If you want to mess around in the fight and just damage people uh, and try and like isolate people on the flanks, you can do that because you can teleport. And remember as well, high survivability because damage that Reaper does, he, he heals himself. So... Yeah, really, really, really strong character. Okay, um, and I think I... Can I, I... I don't know. I think I might leave that tier at that. Um, there is an argument for Zarya at this tier, I think. Um, just because I think... Ah, oh, but maybe I'll put her in... Uh, okay, I'm, I'm just... This is going to be the last one, and it's going to be Zarya. And this is because Zarya is... <laughs> fun to play. <laughs> That's such a terrible thing. Like, I know this is a tier list, but whatever. Oh, the reasoning is shocking, but this is... Okay, so Zarya, the double bubble that she can use is pretty good because obviously you can just stop damage hitting any... Uh, well, hitting two people on your team if you need to use it together um, at the same time. Obviously, you, you tend to want to be able to use it on yourself. Sometimes you might double bubble yourself because the more charge you've got, she becomes super powerful. And I think that's where I'm getting at with her. When she's charged, she is just deleting people from the game. Um, and that's really strong, but it depends on getting charged. But because there's less barriers, you generally are getting hit more, so it's easier to get charged. But on the flip side, it does mean that Zarya is kind of like a bit feast or famine, where you're either going to play a game well and you, your bubbles are going to be well-timed and you're going to have a lot of charge and you're going to be able to keep your team alive, or your bubbles are going to be trash, your team are going to be dying, and they're probably going to be shouting at you to swap. So I think she's amazing if you play her well, but if you don't, then there's a there's a bit of a problem and that might be some shocking logic because some of these other heroes and i guess you could apply that to any hero and go well what happens if i'm an amazing cassidy well then i should be an s tier okay yeah sure but if you were an s tier cassidy and you just played soldier or sojourn you'd just be even better you know what i mean that's so that's where i'm getting at but but uh zarya yeah she's probably the best of the brawler tanks right so Pure Brawler is basically your Junker Queen, your Roadhog, although, haha, <laughs> don't know why he's a tank. Uh, and I guess just those two, because Reinhardt fits into the sort of Sigma role where he's a barrier kind of Brawler tank. Um, but basically, Zarya is the best out of the pure Brawler tanks by far. Okay, let's move on to the next tier now, because I don't think I really want to put anyone else in uh, the Amazing tier. No, I don't. Okay, so... Uh, let's speed this up a little bit now because I think we've got through the best heroes. We're just going to start chucking in the other heroes and giving very quick explanations as to why 
Uh, they are where I think they should be. Um, and I think we're going to go with... Um, I think we're going to go with Zen on... Good. Now, Zen does high damage. So if you, if you can land the hits with Zen, you're okay. Uh, you can fend yourself off from flankers. You can add to the team's damage. Remember, though, you don't do a lot of healing with Zen. Although the healing is easy to apply. You just throw a Harmony Orb on a target and let them get on with it. This is obviously good for flankers and people who are further away from the team, provided you maintain line of sight. Discord Orb, though, is always going to be Zen's main attraction. So if the enemy team start playing, like, I don't know, a more tankier comp, maybe they've got a Rhine and a Reaper and God knows what. The Zen, if you just focus on Discord in the tank, you can actually kill them quite quick. So Zen is really strong, um, but again, Zen does suffer with his survivability, as in he doesn't have any survivability. His survivability is landing a shot. So if you are a good player, I suppose, then he's okay. But if you're not, then there are definitely better options than Zen, because if you can't look after yourself, you will just get farmed over and over again. Also, if you've got a good support with you, so if you've got like a Brig with you or an, a Bap or an Ana, and they look after the Zen, Zen will be quite powerful. But again, it sort of does rely on a little bit of team coordination instead of just going straight up lone warrior. But I, but you know, I, I, honestly, if if you were looking to play Zen, as soon as Kiriko is available, play Kiriko. She's just very similar to Zen in terms of the way she does the damage. Uh, obviously, everything else is totally different to her, but I think you might be able to fit into that role quite well. But yeah, Zen is still okay because Discord is really, really strong. And Transcendence is really the only effective counter to Dragon Blade, which you're going to see a lot of. So I don't know, maybe we see a bit of um, Genji. Of course, the other counters are just killing him, right? The main counter is just killing him when he does it. <laughs> Don't run away. Uh, all right, let's move on. So I'm going to go for... Uh, so I don't think Junker Queen is too bad as a tank. I don't think she's good. And I think there are better options than... No. So I think Junker Queen... Okay, Junker Queen's okay. And Road... I'm going to go like this. Because Roadhog is... I'm going to... This is a bit of a hot take, right? Roadhog could be absolutely amazing on the ladder because if the games are uncoordinated roadhog can just be roadhog you can just be you know just going off on the flanks playing the flank hog everyone's seen this in overwatch one but he's much better in overwatch two because he's got a ton more health so he's obviously way more survivable and if this guy's on your flanks okay you don't have a tank with your team but if he's killing everyone on the flanks then oh my god so i think we might see a lot of solo queue warriors on roadhog actually being quite good however in like a team environment he's he's not a tank he just this hero isn't a tank he has no tank abilities he's just a fat guy <laughs> that's it it's like what if he gets his body in your face then yeah he's blocking damage but if he's not he's not he's not tanking anything so ugh. but there are better options than roadhog and that would be junker queen if you wanted to play that style of like dps tank i guess um junker queen's always got stuff to do you're throwing out gracie your dagger to apply wounds you're using carnage your massive axe to try and apply wounds um you're shooting people with your shotgun you're melee attacking them you know you're doing all of this to well you don't apply wounds with your shotgun but all of those other attacks i just spoke about do this makes her highly survivable and her ultimate is really really good so her ultimate she just spins her axe round flies forward every target she hits she applies wounds to them but she also anti-heals them so anna and Junker Queen. It's actually, it's actually poetic that they're right next to each other on this list. But Anna and Junker Queen are the uh, the only characters in the game that can apply anti-heal. So this is an amazing engage. She spins through the enemy team. Suddenly she's in the back of their team. They're all anti-naded and the rest of your team just run in and clean them up. Really, really good. But yeah, I, I would... She, she's, she's fine. But I just think like in a tank role, obviously these two guys are just absolutely supreme. And I would definitely be looking at playing those over, over the Junker Queen. you got to remember as well, Junker Queen's been heavily nerfed. She was mega meta in overwatch league but the devs have nerfed the hell out of her for the overwatch 2 launch so she might even drop a bit lower but ugh. now the other tank i'm going to throw into this tier is arissa just because i'm not sure i'm really really not sure about arissa so arissa um what what is kind of annoying with arissa is she doesn't really have that much mobility um and she can't really have a ton of mobility although she does have a movement speed increase but she doesn't have um I'm just going to straight up say I'm not sure about Arissa. I just think Arissa could be better than this. She might even be... She could even... You know, there's a world where Arissa goes up here, right? But I think Arissa might be... Or even on the Amazing tier. I'm, I'm just not sure about Arissa because I still think there are better options than Arissa. But we're going to just have to wait and see because she has been buffed. So she might be better than I think she is. Um, I need to play some games basically with Arissa to, to find out. But 
yeah, she's a completely different hero for Overwatch 2, right? She's had a total rework. She doesn't have a barrier anymore, but she does have her own defense matrix style ability, which is the javelin spin, which when she uses it, she can... Oh, sorry, I smacked my microphone. Sorry about that, guys. She does have a javelin spin, which she can spin and then rush forward, and it knocks people out of the way and also deletes projectiles. So, um, yeah, and obviously she can throw a spear, and her ultimate is kind of so-so for the tank ultimate. It's not the best. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm just going to leave her there. I think she'll be okay. Um, the, the thing is with the tanks, they're all pretty good because there's just one of them on a team. So they've all been like kind of super buffed with the exception of, of Hog because he's not really a tank. So if Hog was DPS, he'd be up in amazing probably, <laughs> but he's not. Uh, so anyway, let's move on. Let's move on because this video is getting too long. What the hell? I just can't help it. I just love talking about Overwatch. Okay, so I think next tier, um, uh, I think we're going to go for... Oh, I don't... Okay, so Doomfist, there's simply better dive tanks than Doomfist. That is Winston, it's just a better dive tank. Diva's a better dive tank. Doomfist is broke. Doomfist is just no good at the moment. You might even say Doomfist is bad, to be fair. But I think Doomfist is... Uh, I wouldn't really bother with Doomfist unless you really want to... You really enjoy his playstyle. It's difficult. Um, he's a complicated hero to get right now. All his timings are different. They've nerfed his movement quite heavily. Um, so he's just like... Yeah, I don't know about Doomfist. I... I wouldn't play him. I would just pick the other dive tanks, Winston definitely, or Anna uh, or Diva. Sorry, he's just going to be more effective. Um, Wrecking Ball. Now this is another one. This Wrecking Ball is. I kind of want to say Wrecking Ball is good, but maybe Wrecking Ball is better. Hmm. Right, I said I wouldn't do it, but I'm going to do it. Screw it. I'm putting Wrecking Ball in amazing. I think Wrecking Ball is... Yeah, re so Wrecking Ball is... <laughs> you see, Wrecking Ball is, again, like one of these tanks where he doesn't really tank, right? But his tanking is disrupting the enemy team, and he does this way better than Doomfist does. Um, and I don't think anyone can really compare to this. because So he's highly survivable, right? When he uses his adaptive shields in the enemy team, he gets tons and tons of shields and he just won't die. Well, tons of extra health, over health, whatever it is now in Overwatch 2. But he it's highly mobile. He can isolate targets and targets are generally more isolated in 5v5 anyway. So if he can keep identifying like that healer out of position or that DPS out of position and he keeps taking them on 1v1, he would generally win those 1v1s all the time. So if you play him like that, he is amazing. And I think he's really... I think he's simple to play well, but I think he's difficult to play amazingly well. So you need to get all of his tech down, you know, knowing how to edge slam, knowing when to slam, knowing how to use your ultimate correctly and all of that stuff. And your grappling hook, because it's kind of weird, the grappling hook. It's not like how it used to be a few years ago in Overwatch, where you could just keep firing the grappling hook as soon as it's disconnected. Now you can't. There's a cooldown component attached to it, but he's so survivable. I don't think you would ever die on this character if you played him correctly. Because you can go in, slam, try and kill someone, get out. Go in, slam, try and kill someone, get out. And just keep doing that. You don't really need an organized um, attack like Winston might. You know, if Winston's going in, he needs someone to come with him because he's not going to get the kill. Whereas Hammond can get the kill. So I think Hammond is actually pretty good. Okay, let's move on. So uh, we don't have any tanks left now. Uh, the bad tier. Uh, I kind of... Okay, let's just go through this quick now. I know I keep saying that, but I'm going to go for it now. There are better hit scans than Bastion. I just wouldn't bother playing him. Um, unless you need loads of shield break, and in which case, I just, I don't think Bastion's worth it because it's not, it's not worth the trade-off. Rest of his abilities are terrible, and his uh, hitbox is so massive, he's so easy to kill. Hanzo, um, I'm going to say Hanzo's good because you know you land the headshots, you get the kills. That's literally, it's always been the same way with Hanzo. If you're a great Hanzo player, you'll just go through the tiers and you can play him anywhere. But if you're not the best, there are better options that you should pick for more reliable damage. But Hanzo's still okay, and again, he's highly mobile, like maneuverable. He can climb. So wall climbing to get to high ground positions is a very, very strong with Hanzo. And I definitely would consider doing that a lot in Overwatch 2. Um, I think May is also someone I could put in this category as well in good. There's better DPS options than May, but May does have a wall and a wall can be very effective. May's survivable. She can heal herself. She can cleanse herself with ice block. Her ultimate's pretty good as well. And so, yeah, like May, May's okay. Like I, I wouldn't be... I wouldn't be stressed if I had a May on my team. I'd be like, hey, it's fine. If I had a Bastion, though, I'd be like, oh, no, what the hell? <laughs> and if I had a Hog, I'd be like, oh, avoid this player unless he kills the enemy team. That'd be, uh, uh, no, remove him from my avoid player list. <laughs> um, 
Okay, better options. Right, this is going to pain me to do this, but I'm putting Junkrat down here. There are definitely better options than Junkrat. Um, I, Junkrat's really fun to play, though. Uh, but there's just a lot of better options. Junkrat has got a lot of um, damage that is... Well, he's got a lot of damage potential, but it's very hard for him to actually damage people because I'll just move out of the way. Now, there are choke points that you can spam with your primary fire and throw your concussion mines into... You can play flank rat and just go around on the flanks and like you can kill people really quick with junk rat at point blank range. If you hit them with a primary fire, then throw a concussion mine into them. That's killing a lot of characters in the game. That's killing DPS and support. So they're literally one HP left after that. And then you just throw another concussion mine at them and they're dead. So he is good for that, but I think there's just a lot of better options than junk rat. Um, but that's not gonna stop me playing junk rat. And that's the moral of the story of this video, you know. Play the characters that you want to play because it is the start of a new game and it's going to be a whole new meta that starts developing. Um, and so you can sort of, you know, chill for a while. But these guys are definitely the best. Heroes, right? <laughs> okay, let's move on to... Uh, oh, where do I want to put Mercy, actually? Ooh, Mercy, Mercy, Mercy. I think Mercy is... I think Mercy is like a solid good pick. And it's only because she doesn't have the burst healing of the other healers above her, really. Every other bit of Mercy's kit is fine. And I wouldn't mind, like, if you've got a Mercy on your team, it's cool, whatever, take that as a support. She's got good healing output, good survivability, uh, the ultimate's okay, but she can res, which is obviously really strong. Um, yeah, I think Mercy's fine, especially in 5v5, you know, healers need to be mobile, and Mercy is, but it depends on being a good Mercy player and knowing where your allies are to actually fly to them. But yeah, I think Mercy, yeah, she's, she's, she's good, I'd be fine with Mercy. Um, and I think, I guess, I'm going to put... Uh, do I want to put Moira in next? Do I think I put Moira here as well, to be honest. Yeah, I think I go with Moira. It's, it's, it's sort of for the same reasons, right? Moira is highly survivable. She can obviously fade, which makes her impervious to damage, cleanses effects off herself, and she can move fast while she does it, and then super jump at the end of it so she can get out of bad positions. She's got good AoE healing. The only problem with Moira is if the team is more spread out because you've got maybe more dive style heroes it's hard for moira to be as effective as as mercy but i still think she can be okay in a lot of comps and, and she's going to be reliable because she's hard to kill remember the key thing in this 5v5 world is being hard to kill and i don't think um there are many more supports that are harder to kill than the moira obviously i think brig probably is but moira's got that you know alternate fire which leeches health of people she can fade away she can heal uh, you know, she she's pretty good, but it's it's sort of like how can I put this? It's like she works in different comps, I guess. If you've got more like of a, a a brawl comp where your team's close together and you're all moving as a unit, take the Moira over the Mercy. You know, but it's never going to be like that. It's never going to be Moira and or Mercy because Mercy would still work in that comp as well. But yeah, I think she's good. I think she's good. Again, it's just a survivability thing. Um, Widow, <sighs> Widow. You know what? So Widow is the only hero, I think, here that is highly map dependent. So unlike the Monte Carlo map, Monte Casino, whatever it is, she, she would be, or Casino Royale, whatever it is, she would be S tier because there's long sight lines. But then if she was on, I don't know, uh, maybe New Queen Street, there'd probably be better options, you know what I mean? Pick another... DPS. So she, I'm just going to put her as good, and it's a, it's a massive cop out. This is, but like she is highly map dependent. So if you're on Junker Town, play Widow on the first point. Yes, very good. Loads of sight lines. But if you're on a map that's more close in, and there's more line of sight blockers, and that's another thing to remember. In Overwatch 2, a lot of the older maps have got extra bits of terrain added to them, so it does make it a little bit more easier for enemies to hide behind them. Widow can be a little bit weaker, but. Yeah, the thing is as well, it's 5v5, there's less barriers, there's one less tank, so there's one less thing for Widow to worry about. There's one less dive tank to come after her. So if she's just sitting there free firing, she will just dominate the game. So again, this is going to be a character that is really, really strong. Can be countered and generally gets countered by the map that she's on. But yeah, you know, pay attention to Widow, she could be next level. Um, Farah, oh my god. I just realised there's no echo on this list. <laughs> there's no echo. <laughs> uh, but I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put Farah. Uh... I. 
Okay, I'm going to put Farah here because there are better options than Farah, and the better option is Echo. An Echo would go into sort of good, I would say. Maybe amazing, but probably good. I don't know. Might be amazing. You know, so here's the thing. So Farah is a, very easy to kill by, for hit scan. She's easier to hit than Echo is, right? If you've got a Mercy Pocket with Farah, it's still going to be quite strong. But you should just play Echo. Don't play Farah, play Echo. In which case, you can then dive onto targets. So if you're playing, like, dive. Imagine if you had this team comp up here. And then, like, you had... Uh, let, well, obviously, you wouldn't have Sigma. So if Sigma was out of this, but you had um, Echo in there instead of a Sigma. So imagine this is Echo. This would be fine. You know what I mean? It's like, hey, cool. We'll, we'll go for that. Because Kiriko is actually really good at healing targets in the air as well. Um, but yeah, I, I would put Echo probably... Uh, Amazing might be a bit too generous. Maybe it's good. You know what? I'm just going to leave Echo in an imaginary tier between them. <laughs> the ultimate cop out. But yeah, Farah's like, there are just better options than Farah. You, you're probably going to find it quite difficult to get a lot of value with Farah just because it's it's more open, the game is. And Farah, she's in the air and she's kind of... I mean, you can play Farah in like a close range dive style, but at that point, you're just better off playing Echo. Uh, Reinhardt is good. Yeah. I mean, he's the only, like, pure barrier tank. So sometimes there'll be a call for him. But he does struggle in Overwatch 2. He's not the Giga Chad tank he once was. Even though he's got two fire strikes now and he can control his charge better, he still suffers because there's just a load of better options. Um, yeah, so he's okay. And Sim. Oh, my Lord. The Sim haters. Um, I could put Bastion down on this tier. You know what? Screw it, I will. Bastion can go on that tier as well. Because <laughs> I just don't know why you would play Bastion. And Sim is... She's bad when she's played on most of the Overwatch 2 maps. She's bad when she's played in most of the Overwatch 2 comps. But there are times when Sim can be really, really strong. I think what is happening here is if we, if you look at this tier list and if I was to get Kiriko and then put Sim next to Kiriko and we looked at these two heroes, one is an old Overwatch hero with a kit designed before the game launched. This is a hero designed for Overwatch 2 with a kit for Overwatch 2. And the difference couldn't... It's just night and day. Kiriko, highly mobile, self-sufficient, you know, amazing character. Sim, she's based around, well, turrets that don't move. Um, that's a problem in a world where everybody's moving. So, ew. all right, guys, I'm going to leave this video at that. Now, I don't think um, there's much more we can say, to be honest, about this. Remember, though, it is early days in Overwatch, so things will change. But I guess just to wrap this up, if you are looking for a hitscan DPS... Definitely, I'll be looking at Soldier or Sojourn. If you want to play a flanker, um, take a look at Genji and Tracer. If you want to be a support, you're looking at Kiriko, Lucio, Anna, Batiste, or um, Brick. And then for tank, it's dive tank's got to be Winston. And uh, any other tank is Sigma. I think that's probably where we're going for. All right, guys, thanks for listening to the video. This has been a bit of a meaty one, but it's been my first tier list and sort of hero breakdown for Overwatch 2, and I'm looking forward to it because it's going to be great to look at this in like a few weeks' time when everything's totally different. But if you're going straight into the game right now, these are the best heroes in Overwatch 2. All right, guys, thanks for watching the video, and I'll catch you on the next one. See you soon.